The late 70s and 80s were a rich time for the alternative music scene. Saturated in youth culture, the scene saw an explosion of post-punk, gothic darkwave, as well as wistful dream pop and shoegaze. In 1982, a Scottish gothic pop duo emerged on the Glasgow indie scene with their campy, flamboyant image and an array of perky, melancholy pop songs. This was the band Strawberry Switchblade, formed in the late 70s by Bohemian art stalwarts Rose McDowell and Jill Bryson. McDowell was in an avant-garde band called The Poems at the time, and Bryson was studying at the Glasgow School of Art. The two bonded in 1976 over their love for local bands, specifically the famous Scottish jangle pop band Orange Juice, who were called the New Sonics at the time. When Bryson and McDowell decided to start a band, they named it Strawberry Switchblade, which was inspired by a song of the same name by musician and member of the band Orange Juice, James Kirk. The name was a perfect representation of the band's duality. Our image was colorful, but our minds were dark, McDowell told The Guardian. In 1982, the group were invited to do a few recording sessions at John Peel's studio at the BBC, as well as David Jensen's show on Radio 1. These sessions were heard by record executive David Balf, who was also known for playing keyboards with the Teardrop Explodes, and he offered to manage the group. Soon after, the band was signed to Warner Brothers and recorded their career-defining, and only, album. While the group was very short-lived, this album would go on to become a post-punk classic and solidify Bryson and McDowell as cult heroes. Strawberry Switchblade were a very unique pop group because they were just coming off the end of the Glasgow punk explosion and were able to blend colorful, idiosyncratic synth pop with the dark romanticism of gothic darkwave. Beneath the catchy pop hooks were deeply introspective and sorrowful lyrics. The song Trees and Flowers was written about Bryson's agoraphobia, which is a fear of being caught in danger in open spaces where help may not be available. Their songs were known for booming orchestral darkwave instrumentals, in addition to jubilant, sparkling, tinkling synths and elongated horns, which provided a sonic mood of dancing on rainbows while crying about the trials and tribulations of life. Their intricate, ethereal harmonies and melancholy lyrics were a huge selling point in the band's sound, in addition to the colorful, tinkling instrumentation that gave the songs a sense of levity. Peaking at number 5 in the UK Top 10 in 1985, the band's biggest hit was Since Yesterday, a somber, lavish dance hit about regret. My favorite song off the album is Deep Water, a hauntingly thumping track complete with wind chimes, drones, and dissonant strings and organs. It's quite a trip. In addition to their hauntingly enduring discography, Strawberry Switchblade were also known for pioneering the flower punk goth aesthetic, combining frilly polka dotted dresses, tulle skirts, flowers, and bows with their goth sensibilities. In a way, they are considered the overlooked underground pioneers of the gothic Lolita aesthetic, which originated in Japan and Japan also happens to be the home of Strawberry Switchblade's most die-hard fan base. It's a shame that the band was so short-lived. However, their cult legacy has endured. It shows up everywhere in fashion trends and in new music, unknowingly or not. 
You can support them by streaming Rose McDowell's independent projects, which are also fantastic, and buying Jill Bryson's art.